The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is the beginning of our epistle reading for this past Sunday. And this past Sunday was Epiphany Sunday. Tomorrow is Epiphany Day. Well, I'm recording this on Tuesday evening. Wednesday is Epiphany Day. From Ephesians 3, verses 2 to 9, Paul wrote, the Apostle Paul wrote, Surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you. That is the mystery made known to me by revelation, as I have already written briefly. In reading this, then, you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ which was not made known to men in other generations, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. This mystery is that the gospel, is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and sharers together in the promise in Christ Jesus. I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace, given me through the working of his power. Although I am less than the least of all God's people, this grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, which for ages past was kept hidden in God, who created all things." Your friends in Christ. Before Christ was born in Bethlehem, he was a mystery to everyone except, of course, to God. No human being knew just exactly what Jesus would do to be the Savior, how that was going to work out. But now, if we look back on the pages of the Old Testament and look at the different prophecies there and how they talk about the different things that Jesus would do, well, we get a pretty good, clear picture, a decent picture of this mystery that's described here in our reading for today. But the people who lived before Christ, they had those prophecies, but they were at a loss. And maybe a good way to picture that is, oh, just to think if someone describes to us a favorite food or dessert that we hadn't ever had before, we really would be guessing about what it really tastes like until we actually tasted it. And then once we tasted it, well, then we know. But you know, even after the people of Jesus' day, <coughs> after they saw Jesus and they saw his work, he still was a mystery to them. And that's because we by ourselves cannot understand Jesus. Paul tells us here, though, that that mystery was revealed to him by the Holy Spirit. He said, Surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you. That is the mystery made known to me by revelation, as I have already written brief, briefly. Before Paul became an apostle, he was a Pharisee. And as a Pharisee, he was someone who had studied the scriptures quite detailed. Yet he didn't understand Jesus. And he thought in his earlier years that what he was doing is he was serving God by persecuting Jesus' followers. He thought he was serving God when he was trying to eradicate Christianity. Paul had a completely wrong picture of what God wanted. And the fact of the matter is, is that we too would have a completely wrong picture of God's plan of salvation, of what God wants in our lives, until the Holy Spirit works in us, until he reveals to us the mystery of Christ. And now that mystery, it was revealed to Paul when he was Saul the persecutor heading to the city of Damascus, to try to persecute Christians there. Then the Holy Spirit revealed 
that mystery when Christ appeared to him. From then on, led by the Holy Spirit, Paul came to be what most people would consider to be the greatest of the apostles. But Paul was always humbled when he recalled how he had persecuted Christians, when he remembered his past. That's probably why he considered himself, as it says here, to be less than the least of all God's people. And now, none of us have killed believers as the Apostle Paul was probably responsible for the deaths of, of Christians as he was persecuting them. But what we need to do is be like Paul and also consider ourselves to be, as he says, less than the least of all God's people. And that's because we can see more sin in ourselves than we can see in anyone else. We know the wrongs we've committed, at least some of them. We know we've spoken words that we shouldn't have spoken. And we know the thoughts that fill our minds. We know those things. God says every inclination of the thoughts of man is evil all the time. Since we know our own thoughts, well, we can know how infected by sin we really are. And we don't know the thoughts of others, and so, and we don't know their entire lives, so we can't judge them to be worse sinners than we are, worst of criminals than we are, because we know ourselves better than we know them. But thankfully, the Holy Spirit has revealed to us the mystery of Christ that solves the problem of our sin, of, of all of our sins. Even though we look at ourselves and see ourselves as the worst of sinners or the less than the least of all God's people, we know that in Christ, because the Holy Spirit has revealed it to us, that Christ solves our problems. The Holy Spirit he lets us know of God's amazing love for us, of what our Savior did for us, even though we see ourselves as the worst of sinners. Yet, through faith, we know that what Jesus did is he made things right between us and God. Now that was especially revealed to the apostles on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came to them in a special way. It was especially revealed to the apostle Paul at the time of his conversion. The Holy Spirit gave them a special revelation so that they were able to know the mystery of Christ about Jesus the Savior and, and able to also faithfully share that wonderful message with the world. Well, Paul said, in reading this then, you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to men in other generations, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. Yet the fact of the matter is, is that no matter how much we would study the Bible, if we would study the Bible without the Holy Spirit, we could not understand the mystery of Christ. Paul said, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. As a Pharisee, Paul had studied the scriptures for years and he didn't understand it at all. He didn't understand Jesus. He didn't see the whole message of sin and grace, law and gospel that by the grace of God we see. He didn't see that, but once the Holy Spirit called him to faith, then he saw Jesus as his Savior. And we can be so thankful that the Holy Spirit has come to us also through the Word, through baptism, to call us to faith so that we know Jesus, so that we know our sins, so that we know our Savior. And on this Epiphany Day, as we 
would think a little bit about the wise men and their worship of the infant Jesus, we can be so thankful that God revealed that mystery to the Gentile wise men because it reminds us that Jesus, he came to be the Savior of all, including you and me. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for revealing to us the mystery of the gospel and for letting us know that Jesus came to be the Savior of all, including you and me. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.